Well, John, there is a thing for radiation called photoremediation, which the inventor of that was murdered. To make a long story short, when these guys have their plans, the New World Order, to destroy the planet, you're very much correct in saying they, they plan to destroy every, uh, you know, pretty much man, woman, and child on the planet except for them. But what they also plan to do is to basically have so many, if you will, gene banks and seed banks and sperm banks and every other kind of bank to basically reconstitute a lot of the stuff that has taken place in history. Now, you know, I tried 15 years ago to get people's attention with my book, Genetic Armageddon, which, by the way, in my opinion, is one of the most important things I've ever written. People wouldn't grab that thought. But here's what we got to talk about first, the environment. The amount of volcanoes going off is unparalleled. Now, some people say, well, we didn't know because we didn't have satellites. That's BS. You can tell by tree rings, sedimentation, other things, volcanic ash. You can link them to time periods based on the sedimentary evidence and other evidences, too. Radioactive decay, uh, oh, good night, uh, argon, potassium, carbon-14. That can be fooled in some areas. But what I'm saying is this, is now we've got some of the biggest volcanoes literally on the verge of horrific explosions. Whether we go to Kilauea in Hawaii, we go to all those Popo, uh, Popo, I can't, Popo Capito in Mexico City, and some of the other ones, Lokan in Indonesia. I mean, I could run through a litany of them and take the whole hour just on what's going on in the volcanism, both above the earth and in the seamounts, which would be under ground volcanoes. Then you bring in all of the earthquakes that are happening in the continental United States and hearing of methane releases, people's wells being fouled, uh, the strange smells coming, and it brings me to the point of saying God really does say he will destroy those who destroy the earth. And the point that I think people have got to understand now with everything, you can basically see everything lining up. Years ago, remember we would talk, John, on the very first shows you and I did together about the coming food crisis. Now the food crisis is here. You know, 50 million people on food stamps. We've got a budget that will never be balanced. It cannot be balanced. It is uh, econometrically impossible to even propose to be balanced. So the point is, as long as the printing presses keep running and there is a form of normalcy in the economic realm, people think everything is fine. But imagine when the veneer gets stripped, they go to their faucets, there's no water. And, you know, you know, I, I just want to be blunt. People can no longer, I, I'm assuming, anybody who denies what's obvious, whether it's chemtrails, whether it's methane, the Fukushima radiation is destroying Japan. The Japanese population is dead and dying. I've heard experts behind the scenes say that. The point being is, is that whenever we bring out information, they change their plan. And somehow, John, you, you, probably me more so, get labeled as doomsday guys or, you know, uh, negative personalities or whatever that they can throw at us. Well, the bull, I'm sorry, the BS, <laughs> the BS has to stop now because the idea is, is everything is plain, everything is evident. And if some brain dead uh, automaton says, well, nothing's wrong in my life, that's just because he's got a paycheck. Wait until the paycheck stops. You look at the average savings in America, and it's in the thousands of dollars, not in the tens or, you know, and people say, what's a savings account? And my answer, that, my answer to that is an artifact from the past. You know, so you, now, you were talking about the Fukushima thing, and I've been covering that yeah. since March 12th, that I'm getting more and more emails and notifications from friends of mine that have grandkids, because we're about that age, and eight, nine-year-olds are getting bone cancer uh, that they never had. I just got an email from a friend that their uh, daughter uh, or granddaughter is in the hospital, 18 weeks pregnant, and emergency conditions because there's no embryonic fluid around the embryo or, or the infant. And it's like the infant mortality rate has already doubled in this country. People aren't even paying attention to it. Well, and I think, I think that you're going to see thyroid cancer. Anybody living in the Pacific Northwest who has a child should be basically taking, under the guidance of a doctor, because God knows we're not doctors, uh, prophylactically uh, iodine tablets, because little children are specifically susceptible to radioactive iodine pooling in uh, their thyroid. And when you take the potassium iodate or iodine tablets, that blocks the thyroid. But you know what? How do you, how do you make sense, John? When everybody is in such a state of denial, the, the, you sent me a photograph of a deer that has so many ulcers and lesions on it that it's, it's disgusting to look at. 
the fish off of Japan are like that way. Everything is going, how do I say this, in, a, in an accelerated spiral down. It's a Coriolis effect. Yeah, in other words, everything is spinning like going into a whirlpool drain. And people, as long as they're on the top of the spin, think they're okay. But as they get closer and closer to the drain, you know, it's going to become very problematic for them. And, and how many people do you personally know, John, that were in one living set of conditions, you can use yourself, five years ago, and look where they are now. Absolutely. It is absolutely detrimental. We are killing not only the children, but now I just put up a story on my website, and again, stevequail.com, where the British medical profession is literally letting babies starve to death. These are full-term babies, no medical conditions, but just letting them starve to death. So euthanasia is the order of the day. Mercy killing, uh, the Lord rebuked their tongues on that one. There is no mercy killing. Blood sacrifice, absolutely. So now we're, we're, in a, we're seeing doctors disheartened because of the changes coming in the medical field. What was it? The first day out the election, how many people lost their jobs? You know, The point is, is that the hopelessness and the despair is accelerating. And, again, uh, you know, people say, what do you do, Steve, to keep uh, sane? I, I basically set my focus, and I do read the Word of God, but I look, I, I look to Jesus. Because, listen, obviously I know how to shoot by the grace of God. Obviously I, I practice some things that I've been preaching for 40 years, probably everything. But the point is, at the end of the day, unless God protects us from the winds or he protects us from the radiation, or he protects us from the biological weapons, or the hydrogen sulfide, or the chemical sprays. You know, John, you're talking about Fukushima, but we've been poisoned on a national level with aluminum and barium in saturation levels that would make the EPA have to rewrite their material safety data sheets. In other words, day after day, the very things that uh, impair brain function, uh, accelerate cancer, are carcinogenic, are mutagenic. If it isn't coming from the spray, it's coming the food we eat. And now the bottom line is we're in a position where there is no denying it. And, and i got to be blunt with you. Anybody that denies it now, I assume, is either on a, a federal payroll or basically, I'll say three things, from another planet or just truly dumb unto death in the process of denial. Because, you know, again, they it, don't live on the same planet you and I live on. And, and also, let's not forget the GMO foods. And I can't believe the California voters voted that down. Um, but I just saw an alert from Monsanto this week that is advising the Canadian farmers that raise canola, do not let your cattle graze on the canola chafe till further notice. Yep. <laughs> Kill them. <It's> okay. <laughs> yeah, but it's okay for you poor dumbass humans to eat it, you know. I mean, look, here's the thing. The food business, even the, the, the major, quote, uh, organic food company country, they just got in trouble. They're, 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 uh, they're allowing GMO food in, and it just kind of denigrates from their name. I won't use their name, but the biggest, you know, organic food company in the United States has now gotten caught cheating, okay? Because, again, people are no longer self-sustainable. And this is the, this is the interesting thing. If you watch Hurricane Sandy and the aftermath, some of the people that are still waiting for services are in the most uh, population-dense areas that voted for the current president. So what am I saying here? I'm saying is, look, you and I can't afford to take a $4 million vacation, but somehow he can for 20 days. And I just want you to know, now I'm being told that, uh, did I tell you this, John, that the uh, Pentagon has censored my website, considering, you know, all this hate speech and racist <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah, the devils that are probably built more churches in Africa and had uh, brother not of my color and, and fed more, and, 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 and I'm not bragging, but I do, I do that, so I, somehow I'm a racist now and a hate monger, you know. Uh, may the Lord deal with their debauchery, their wickedness, their duplicity, and their murder, and may he literal, literal define them as a target of heaven's fury. And I'm serious. When I pray that way, people heard me pray. I could not be more serious. They you, are. You yeah, they're, Hurricane, they're serious. I'm serious. You mentioned Hurricane Sandy. Uh, there are still over 1,300 apartment buildings without electricity. I mean, imagine those getting a little randy. And the people that went to the FEMA camps can't get out. And I, issue, I alerted the folks yesterday, there's an um, a order issued by the county back there that these poor people have lost everything, have until the end of this week, the 30th, to demolish their house, 
uh, or face $2,000 fine uh, per week. What the hell planet do those people think they live on? You know, here's the deal. <laughs> the sowing and reaping is so obvious. Years ago when I went on talk radio, someone asked me a question. I forget it now, but it was based on, it was something like this. How does God determine the level of judgment, the area of judgment, and the severity of judgment? I prayed about that, John, and the answer I got within a week or so was this. He said, tell my people, as to their sins, so will their judgment be, okay? Now, you can't expect uh, uh, God just to, you know, God bless America. I, you know, I think uh, people better be concerned about blessing God because I wrote a little little kingdom of, uh, of lies thing just for the show today. You know, I was just sitting here pondering. I was on the phone with Rome earlier, and it says, in the kingdom of lies, truth is despised. As Jesus is denied, America has died. So the point is, is that, look, we, we live in a town, uh, town, forgive me, we live in a nation where the cities and towns now don't even have enough money for their services. Detroit is going to be declared a non-town. Uh, well, that's at least the proposal. So many uh, areas in California. And now what's the answer? Tax, tax, tax. Can I tell you something? We truly do live in a vampire economy. And I believe all the vampirism, which I speak out against, which I'm totally opposed to, is just indicative. We've become a blood-sucking country, and we've got blood-sucking financiers that have raised pillage and plunder the savings of the middle class and now how do you tax people who are flat ass broke <laughs> and by the way flat ass broke if that's offensive so is the ignorance that's exhibited in this country minute by minute you know um i know you pay attention to this stuff but a lot of people don't get it because it's not on the, the propaganda news networks but a lot of people made a big deal about obama going to um, uh, thailand and cambodia and southeast asia right after the election he wasn't there to party, contrary to what was reported on Drudge. Um, he was there trying to keep the Southeast Asia Economic Council together and begging them to join the United States in another free trade thing, yada, yada, yada. Every nation over there, 20 nations, or let's see, what was it? Uh, 15 Asian nations comprising half the world's population are now forming a regional comprehensive economic partnership, excluding the United States. Stay back and be a bitch. <laughs> they don't, you know, they represent 3 billion people. We represent 300 million people of useless eaters that are, have lost all innovation. That we can't really contribute to the world anymore. And they're going, we don't want you part of the new club that we're forming. Well, again, let me show this. And if you realize what uh, he was served food-wise, he said it wasn't even fit for servants. So the contempt is very present. Now, let me share an insight that I don't think people realize. China has been taking large gold bars, the large ones meaning the 400 ounce, 100 ounce good delivery bars, and because of all the shenanigans, and for the record, uh, China now owns the London Bullion Metals Exchange, the uh, LBME, or is in the process of finalizing it before the end of the year, but they're melting it down into kilo bars for good delivery. Number one, they're taking out, and they're brilliant. I'm not a China basher. I understand their history. And I've got to tell you, they're going to make move. Now, why do I have any authority to speak on China? Because I'm the one that put up with ridicule 15 years ago in Sessa when I said China is going to back their currency with gold. And you'll know when that happens. It's the end of Western finance. Uh, everybody, what the hell does you know, you know, I, I mean, I have guys with enough uh, DD, you know, PhDs and everything telling me in the and blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm telling you now it's happening. In an instant, the, the day, or oh, let's just put it into real reference, the hour China declares that, all of the Asian nations, which have a culture of, go of gold ownership, will automatically switch overnight. They won't care about the regional currencies. China will offer them all, and brilliantly so, I might add. They will offer them all conversion deals that you'd have to be a fool, because at that point, like you just said, John, 3 billion people are instantly on the gold standard. Russia will follow suit, and uh, basically Western Europe, which sold all their gold, and the United States, which basically holds all its gold will be in deep doo-doo. Well, um, as, as many people know, Germany and many other nations have demanded their gold deposits back from the New York Federal Reserve Bank, where they are allegedly kept. And now Germany, the Federal Reserve said, no, you're not. 
and, and they won't even let them in to look at it, to audit it. And now I hear this morning that the Netherlands want their gold bars back of 612 tons and about 80% of it. I don't know how they con these countries, but 80% of it is in the United States and Britain. And I guarantee it, as you know, as well as I do, it ain't there. Yeah, I would say this. When it comes to seeing any of those stories about where the gold is and isn't, you can just use the quote from the, uh, you know, uh, Terminator, our, our Arnold Schwarzenegger, hasta la vista, baby. You know, it's gone. It's out of here. You know, it was, and... it was just, listen, this, this is what is the hardest thing for people to understand. When Rothschild in the 1700s made the statement, give me control of a nation's uh, money, currency, whatever, and I care not who writes its laws, he was making probably one of the truest statements. Now, truth doesn't mean I endorse it, but look, Jesus said the love of money is the root of all evil. I take off on that and say the control of money is the control of all evil. And when you talk to people who are billionaires, they, they'll tell you flat out, even Ted Turner was quoted as saying, that kind of power is better than sex. That's what he said shortly after he, you know, basically he probably wanted more power and less Jane Fonda. But he made that statement. You can Google it. So these guys are about power and control. When you see all the problems in America, what's the answer? More surveillance, more military, more militarization of police forces, you know, billions of rounds being sold, hundreds of thousands of firearms, uh, uh, tens of thousands of armored cars. You know, there is... uh, there's going to be another. There's going to be another 9/11. I mean, that's just as sure as the nose on your face. Um, and the players behind it are probably going to be the same players as before. But where my little it's starting to get curiosity here is the gold thing. That what better way to cover your tracks for world crime than to blow up the gold depositories with Chicago uh, uh, Mercantile Board where Comex is traded, or allegedly New York. Um, and they say, golly, we're sorry. It all got vaporized. Well, and, and uh, you know, I should sing that. I'm not as good as Shirley Bassey, but the theme for Goldfinger, that was the whole, I wouldn't even try. That was the whole point of the movie Goldfinger, one of the, whatever, second or third James Bond films. Here's what Revelation 11:18 says. And the nations were angry, and God's wrath has come in the time of the dead, that they should be judged. And thou shouldest give reward unto your servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great. And shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. So these guys are in chemtrail sprays. I literally have eight-year-olds in Chicago, young girls who I know. <clears throat> obviously, I know their parents. Uh, they, their parents teach their kids, and rightfully so, to curse those planes every time they see them in the sky. So now we're at a point where it just gets more and more uh, prevalent that things are not the same anymore. People are dying. I'm getting emails. I put it up on my Q alerts. Ladies and gentlemen, when you go to my website, stevequail.com, go first always to the Q alert. Q alert. So the point is, is that, you know, that's the stuff that I really have the maximum amount of, you know, that gives the current intel. Uh, God, I had a plane go over just a couple of days ago, and it's just clear blue sky, and this thing was just billowing. And, of course, it didn't go away, uh, and then became shortly overcast. But um, the Vatican now is calling for a world central bank and one world currency. They're, I mean, they're conditioning us for it. I mean, all of your currencies, the, the, the Federal Reserve came out this morning and said, or one of the congressmen, basically the Fed, we have no buyers for treasuries, so the Fed is going to buy every one of them. So we're going to owe perpetually this group of criminal bankers interest of trillions of dollars every year on something they put on a piece of paper with no value behind it. Well, absolutely. And and so the bottom line is you wonder why the book of Revelation is so explicit on one of mystery Babylon, and don't let anybody kid themselves. You know, London, obviously Beijing now, uh, Singapore, there's areas that uh, Dubai still are financial centers, but mystery Babylon is no mystery. It says that they who traffic in men's souls. In fact, if you haven't noticed, there's a few islands disappearing in the Pacific that were here one moment and gone the next. The ocean hasn't arrived and the seafloor hasn't sunk. We're testing these weapons out there and vaporizing anything we choose to. I sent Steve a picture of some clouds yesterday, because there's an article out there, I think it was on Intel Hub, that basically they're trying to come up with new names for clouds, because they've never seen, hasn't been a new name for a cloud in over 50 years, 
but all these new, unique cloud formations, well, they're not natural. <laughs> Can you comment on that, Steve? Well, of course not. My response to you, John, this is exactly what you're seeing when you're seeing gravity. And, and by the way, uh, gravity is a pressure. I won't argue that with the people that have been taught it's a force, but it is a pressure. In, in essence, put your finger against your uh, palm, press on it. Obviously, there's two opposing forces there, or there's matter being uh, affected by force in my finger, but where the gravity comes in is where the two points touch. That's as simple as I know how to make it. I'm simplifying it. But those are called, uh, you know, gravity pulse waves. That is indicative of all the upper atmosphere electromagnetic radiation weapons being used against each other. When I wrote the book Weather Wars, again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give a plug. No one else dealt with it at that time. No one was talking about it to the degree. Oh, Nick Baggage was an Angels Don't Play This Harp, and there were a couple books by uh, one of the guys that wrote his book on Harp Got Murdered. But the point is, is that we're seeing full-scale weather wars. That's what I responded to John. There's nothing unusual. The reason they've never been recorded in history is because the technology, uh, unless you go into antediluvian, meaning before the flood of Noah, and then you've got the ice camp puppies around the earth, etc., etc. You've never seen it because it hasn't existed before. I have made the statement. I stand by it, and my critics, you know, let them go do their homework. We are seeing the terror forming of the earth, T-E-R-R-O-R, -R -R, forming of the earth. Not terra, as in Latin, for terrain, but we're seeing total total uh, displacement of the oceans of water that are in the atmosphere. Most people don't real, realize this until, of course, you live in California, you see the Pineapple Express. Gee, isn't it strange the week prior to the horrific rains in California, HARP was focused in its beam angle, if you will, antenna targeting device, whatever the correct word is, and they were just heating up the West Coast like no tomorrow. Then you look at Sandy prior to the hurricane, or what Dutch Sins has done with monitoring all the different radar uh, anomalies in the Midwest, and voila, you have tornadoes. John, i got to say this. I, I've said this before. Some people say, oh, I'm praying for great revival. I said, you can't revive the dead. You need to pray for resurrection, brother, because people don't get it. They say, well, I've never seen this before, or I've been feeling odd. Yeah, you're being mind controlled. I just put up an email on my website in the Q alert from a woman in California who's talking about all the strange effects that the electromagnetic radiation and the scalar waves and the other kinds of waves, there's so many different uh, hidden forms of energy that we peons don't get to know about unless somebody who isn't a peon tells us, which has been the case in many things that I've tried to bring to people. But you know what, John? They won't listen. So please, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give out, people are asking me for my phone number. Call 406-586-4842. 406-586-4842. Get the book Weather Wars because you're going to be affected by it and through it and because of it one way or another. You might as well know what's going on because that's the first antidote for fear. And again, John, I haven't had them for six months. The book is Weather Wars, and I'd also get Genetic Armageddon. The point is, is that anybody can claim that they have the revelation at the time. God gives a revelation ahead of time, so he gives a heads up to warn his people. But if the Lord's people won't act, and obviously they don't act, because, you know, we've endorsed everything that is absolutely anti-biblical, anti-the holiness of God, anti-the name of Jesus. And, and basically, the, the, you know, I think, he, what is it? He who fails to stand for anything will fall, or no, he who fails to stand for something will fall for anything. And now we've got a bunch of people that are unemployed, their histories, their children, their grandchildren, their futures are absolutely negative. How many people don't have jobs? How much student debt is there? Gee, where are the jobs going to come from? You know, <laughs> you know on you and on and on. You know, we watched the absolute embarrassment on TV and all the news stations covered about the mobs on Black Friday lined up and, you know, outside the glass of these shopping centers and by droves and droves and droves. And they open the door, they come running in to save 30 bucks on a big screen or a stupid smartphone. What are they going to do, Steve, when it's the last loaf of bread? I think you know this. <laughs> right now they're fighting with each other. They'll be eating each other. And for the record, John, somebody says, oh, that's so harsh. 
again, 20 years ago when I started on talk radio, and I got to admit, you know, I mean, I, 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 did I really uh, know the timing? No, but I said you'll know that that we're in the end times when cannibalism becomes the order of the day. I mean, every single day now there's a story of somebody killing or the officer cop going to kill 100 women and eat them and blah, 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 or the, or the cannibal gay guy offering uh, his sexual services, but then after he's done with you, he wants to be able to cook you, cut you up, and eat you, and somebody's showing up and gets cut up and eaten. You, you know, know so was, during, the it, peak, it, during the gas crisis uh, in New Jersey, there were people online and one of the Craigslist or something like that offering a gallon of gas for sex. Oh, absolutely. Seven women will... This is in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is a messianic prophet. book of Isaiah says seven women will take hold of one man in that day, saying, take away our reproach. The reproach is being without a husband. I mean, the odds are going to be seven to one. Now, most current uh, monogamous wives don't like that passage, but the point is there's going to be so few men. And with the chemical emasculation of the male in a... America taking place with the metrosexualization of, of the American male. With if you see men portrayed on every com commercial, uh, you know I, I, I marvel. They're always most of them are dweebs, okay? Yeah. And yet there's always a strong female person. Where are those beloved sisters of the Muslim women who are being sexually mutilated, slaughtered, beheaded? Or where are the Christians with the woman in in uh, who is in Iran who was murdered and just cut in half? Did you see that story? Yeah, I did. Um, Hypocritical hypocrites from hell. I mean, I'm telling you what. I know there's a difference between earth anger and, and God's anger. And look, I'm trying to just focus on his anger. But what anger is is a reaction to such a negative series of events. And I can tell you this. I put up on my website, John, uh, the other day all the quotes on cowardice. Cowardice and betrayal. I used to think betrayal would be the order of the day. Now I'm going to add another one to it. Cowardice and betrayal. That's the order of the day. Because, And I want to share this. People, go on my website and read Holly Dale's article on betrayal. Holly, you know, I mean, she wrote about it, so it's okay to talk about it. And she talked about someone who was a prepper, who was an oath keeper. They came to be friends. And then all of a sudden, the person started wanting a list of their preps. Boy, that should have been a big, uh, anybody, anytime anybody asks you beyond generals, they want specifics, hey, assume they're a Fed. Now, you know, again, the thing is, is that, and Holly went on, basically the title is, be careful who you sleep with. I would even uh, just throw another subtitle on that, be careful who you talk to, because everybody is turning, this is a surveillance state. We hired Marcus Wolf. FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency, before DHS was formed, hired Marcus Wolf, the former head of the uh, 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 East German Stasi, and, and basically the secret police who perfected every citizen spying on every citizen. And by the way, all these generals are getting seduced, you know? Those, that's right out of Marcus Wolf's playbook. And when you saw the lady that, uh, I can't say did betray us, but did him in, let's use that technology or that terminology so someone's not offended, all I had to do is see her commercial for a Chris uh, submachine gun to know that she's a trained JSOC, uh, special operations, joint special operations. You can tell a way a person fires a submachine gun or is in the firing machine gun program. It was instant. And I think I called Hawk and I said, Hawk, this lady is an absolute trained professional, Absolutely. just like the one that took out the other general, you know, same, th same way, you know. And, and, I mean, these guys should know they should have in the Pentagon basic training 101. Don't fall for honeypots. You know? you know, there is definitely a coup going on right now. Uh, there's you know, white hats and black hats and 9-11 people and neocons trying to overthrow and assassinate his presidency, and he's firing back. And they're purging the military of a lot of these guys who were involved in this uh, coup attempt. Uh, Panetta, I'm no fan of his, uh, issued a statement last week that they're going to start going through all the military and all the contractors and checking them for morality and ethics violations. So there, there is a huge war. <laughs> you know, that's like playing liar's poker, okay? <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy, do I want to just say something and let loose, but discretion will stop me. The bottom line is, look, we have 
in this country now so many fifth columnists. They're not just Middle Easterners. They're from all over the planet. Free agents, guys working for this uh, group, that group. We've got uh, corporations in America who have the largest private armies in the world. You say who? Well, gee, guess who bought Blackwater, which then became Z, which now is academia. You want to know who bought them? I'm going to guess. Monsanto. That's what I was going to say, Monsanto. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, uh, the deal is, is that uh, I, I, I'm so saddened, John, and, and truly brokenhearted that the people in America just basically, and, and there were some great men in the military, but you know what? They needed to challenge all the challenges at the beginning, not at the end. And John McCain, that bastion of uh, Republican conservatism, all I can say is I hear a bunch of cows yelling boo in the background, you know? Yeah. Uh, the point is, is that we're now at a point where we're facing all of these things. You can deny it all you want, ladies and gentlemen, as long as somebody is – when everybody has what they need to survive – Crime goes down. When everybody doesn't have what they need to live, crime goes up. And even in Bozeman, little Bozeman, you know, now it's it's crime, 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 you know. Yeah, just during the little Kalispell, they just busted an all-female teenage group of burglars. Oh, brother, you know, and, and I mean, you know, it, it just doesn't end. You know, I, I think now I understand why Machiavelli said being unarmed causes you to be despised. In Montana, we still have the right to carry, you know, concealed weapon laws have, have loosened up a bit. Your, your home is still your castle in Montana, your place of business, you know. And I recommend, I just said to every lady listening, please, ladies, learn to shoot from someone most likely other than your husband. Because a trained instructor will train you according to what you need to know. And I can tell you this, time after time, the women who are instructed in handgunning and even in uh, small arms rifles, they do remarkably well because they don't have to get over the John Wayne or the Wyatt Earp uh, mentality, you know. Yeah, I'm going to talk briefly here. Uh, we've got about 10 minutes before the next break uh, about the federal government and states' rights. I mean, People think that we're free, and we're not. We're probably 44th in the world. But here in Montana, two years ago, we passed, a, the citizens did, passed a resolution for medical marijuana to make it legal, to have it controlled, to help people with glaucoma and can't afford prescriptions and shouldn't take prescriptions anyway. But it really, truly helps a lot of people with cancer and so many things. And you got to be have a, a prescription issued for it. So it was orderly. People were starting plantations, I guess, and they had to protect them. Well, the feds come in, and I, I fear for these people in, in Colorado and Washington now because they think that because they passed the bill, they can now have recreational marijuana. That's not true. The feds are going to come down with their heavy hand. Now, there's a case going on here in this state that is so bizarre. This guy was licensed. He was in business. He didn't sell the kids, controlled it in all aspects, paid his taxes on it. The feds come in and bust him because it's under the federal law, it's controlled substance. This guy is facing 75 years in prison. 75 years, Steve, for growing pot. Uh, and meanwhile, the it's, devils that produce the pharmaceuticals that kill upwards of 50 to 100,000 people a year go scot free. Yeah, and he was, he was it was legal under Montana law. I mean, he was. But see, that's the issue of state rights versus federal rights. I know. I've talked to federal agents. They said we don't care what the states do. Our law trumps state rights. And I said, I think you're going to have an issue there at some point because that's not the way it was set up. When, the, but see, here here's the point, John. When you're talking about the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and you're talking about our our principles. As Americans, look, the bottom line is those have all been done away with by those devils in the school and public education. Somebody said, what's your definition of public education? I said, sewer works with a textbook. In other words, the bottom line is, is that, and that's why I commend the homeschoolers. My favorite people, parent-wise, are the homeschoolers. Oh, boy. They, they are. And you, somebody says, well, they're a bunch of bloody terrorists. I said that one time. He said, they're a bunch of bloody terrorists just like you are. I said, a terrorist? <laughs> you know? You know? So, so, so basically, the zombies 
are at full alert, okay? And if people understood that not only does harp affect the weather, it affects your mental thinking abilities. Certain frequencies can put you into the stratosphere as of agitating you. Other frequencies can put you out, totally put you out, as in uh, like a narcotic or an anesthesia. You, you go to sleep. Well, you know, the bottom line is the whole name of the game now is soft kill. Soft kill is a nice, cleanly way of saying, we just dissolve you. We don't blow you away. We dissolve you away, just like you were talking about the islands. It's amazing that some of those islands that disappear are in notorious areas, too, by the way, of all kinds of secret government, you know, uh, laboratories, underwater laboratories. I mean, look, the stuff that you see in science fiction or even the James Bond movies and, you know, that kind of stuff, they, they've... They've had all that stuff. It's old school right now. So the point being, states' rights, the only way, can I be blunt? The only way states' rights will ever prevail is when the people in the states basically say there are no, you know, no federal laws that can usurp our laws. At that point, I expect Air Force bombers, and I'm not kidding, and the full Magilla to be launched against any, say, see, you're, you're talking, when you're talking in the framework of legally, and constitutionally and ethically, you're talking in a world that no longer exists. I'm sorry. I'm not negative. I'm just call out the way it is. 75 years for some guy obeying the law? That's horrific. If I were personally the governor of Montana, I would go to bat for that man. And look, I got news for you. A whole lot less people, before the record, I don't use marijuana. The bottom line is, is that people who do, if anybody's ever suffered from pain, and that stuff, you know, works on, on cancer patients and stuff, you know, the last thing I'm going to do is tell somebody that's lived with chronic pain. I lived with chronic pain for two years. I know what it was like to show up in the hospital and have to get morphine injections or I'd just croak. So I, I know what it's like. And the point is, is that, you know, I, I, I mean, I'm not even a Catholic, and I know what it's like when a doctor reads your wife your last rites, okay? So the point is, is that by the grace of God, I'm warning, and, and the time, listen, the time of warning is over. My, if somebody said, give me the bottom line, the bottom line is, turn to Jesus now. He told us all this stuff, and ask yourself a real simple question. You're tired of me talking about Jesus? Ask yourself this, why is that the name that's hated so much? Why is that the name that's forbidden in the United Nations One World Religion Councils that they're now forming, and they're getting ready? Does it come as a surprise to everybody that, gee, we're going to have a One World Religion? Hmm, sounds biblical to me. A One World Currency? Oh, that's really biblical. And somebody that wants to rule the world, even before the tears for song. That's always been the case. Why is Jerusalem the most contentious spot on the planet? Read the book of Zechariah, even you atheists and agnostics. You tell me why Jerusalem is such a, a point of contention. Some people say, I'll oh, just wipe out all the Jews, there'll be no more contention. Uh-uh. Jerusalem is the seat of the throne of David in which the Lord Jesus Christ will return to, to rule the earth for 1,000 years. And people say, oh, that's just all that Christian stuff, or that Christian stuff. Even the idiots in the mainstream news media are having to use uh, uh, biblical terms because their language fails them. Oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, the fiscal cliff is a neuro-linguistic programming term. If you watch any of the mainstream media, they're talking about fiscal cliff, fiscal cliff, fiscal cliff, fiscal cliff. What they're preparing everybody for is the event that my friend V was talking about. When simply, I don't know what the event will be, but an event will take place. People will clamor for some way of commerce and trade, and guess what? You just got to go down to your friendly post office and get your little M-O-B, Mark of Beast card. And somebody said, well, that can't be the Mark of Beast because uh, God, God's going to take us out of here before that time. Oh, really? <laughs> you know? Oh, really? You know, tell that to the Christians that are being slaughtered. And by the way, not one word in the media. And the Democrats, you know, the Democrats, they, they pulled what I would call, and, and look, I am not a Republican. I am in contempt of the Republican Party. But when the Democrats denied God on their platform three times, guess what? I could hear a rooster crow. And that's exactly what happened when Jesus denied Peter. 
three times. You know, a I, rooster. Saw, I saw that this last summer, too, and I was like, oh, my God. That's not a yeah. rooster. <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, listen, can I tell you something? The, you know, God who made the eye to see and the ear to hear, trust me, he's not, uh, uh, you know, he's not unaware of that because he knows what's in men's hearts. And, you know, and, and God is not a man that he should lie. And for the record, he never was one. For they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so when the people say, here's the next card being played out by the devil that are, the aliens, our progenitors, those who created us, who dumped uh, their garbage off their spaceship and evolved into us and, oh, Bigfoot and Sasquatch and Neanderthal, Cro-Magnum, uh, Peking men, uh, uh, Beijing men, you know, Australopithecus of Africanus. These are real names, by the way. You know, they're coming back to save us. My answer to them is, who are they? And, uh, gee, they were here once before. Why did they leave? Well, and who created them? Yeah. Um, I was talking to a Muslim yesterday, and we were talking about this alien thing. Uh, really nice guy, Dr. Uh, Kevin Barrett. Uh, he runs a radio show. Nice, peace-loving man. He's talking about the aliens blowing, blowing away the Muslim religion. He says, no, I don't think so. Yahweh created everything. You know, I got no problem with it. Well, Yahweh did create everything, but everything, one-third of everything, went in total rebellion against God. And, and you know, uh, you know, I personally don't call God Yahweh. Everybody that I know that is called God Yahweh, 90% of my death threats ran real have come from Yahweh followers, okay? So, so I don't think they got the part uh, where God said you're to love him with all your heart, might, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. I think kind of that's kind of not in there. So, you know, uh, uh, please, people, don't send me any of those emails because, look, Jesus. Then I get the people that say, Jesus isn't his real name. Well, I got news for you. I saw him face to face, just as John the Revelator saw him. And when I fell at his feet as dead, he lifted me up. And I said, what? Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, your Savior. He didn't go into some, I'm not a Hebrew, okay? To a Hebrew, he would call himself Yeshua. You know, you know when you're in a, a meeting where uh, they shall call him, you shall call his name Jesus. Okay, if it's in Greek, it's Yeshua, excuse me, Hebrew, it's Yeshua. But the point is, is what I'm trying to tell people is you can argue all those points, but God did not create the fallen angels. God created holy angels who chose to fall. And by the way, your Muslim buddy doesn't know his history very well. He needs to look into who the jinn are, okay? And, and can I say something? Islam is, is basically surrender to the sword. And if you don't understand global jihad, I am not a fan of global jihad, okay? I am not a fan of Islam. I'm not a fan of what they're doing to their women across the world. Their honor killings and all that stuff. That's BS. It's flat-ass murder. And seriously, for anybody to, to embrace that stuff and, and female circumcision, mutilation, I know Steve's helped me in my darkest hours numerous times, and I can't thank the man enough for that. And hopefully the message that he has will take seriously. You know, turn to the Lord, because he, and I sign off every day. God's waiting for your call. Operators are standing by. He's wanting to hear from you, and he'll answer. Okay, John, one of the things that, you know, we've got to talk about, too, is all the sinkhole traffic. You know, where is where is the sanity in this country? This is an honest question. When none of the mainstream is reporting some of the biggest events, and I, I do want to read you uh, Romy's email. Ladies and gentlemen, the sinkholes, especially in Louisiana, are going to be a very big problem. And the deal is, is that if you've never been told the truth, up until this time, what makes you think you'll ever be told the truth at the time it would probably save your life? And I think that this is something that's critical for people to start to understand that, you know, things are changing and for the worse. Imagine this. Imagine that there are earthquakes being induced. Imagine that as the earthquakes are induced, specific pockets of natural gas uh, are, are, are coming to the surface, and also organic volatile substances, OVS, okay? Because imagine that some of these areas where, where, they, where they had a dry well, they pumped down toxic waste. It's kind of like the return of the toxic adventure. <laughs> now, I want to I share this because this is important, and I think people will get it. When Romy's in prayer 12 hours a day, and, and she really does live in that realm, God knows. I've never met anybody like her, and I don't think there's everybody. I mean, I just don't know anybody, and, and I know a lot of people worldwide. But listen to this. 
Steve, there was an article today on your website about a vent off the coast of Hawaii from Kilauea and the magma pushing up the floors of the oceans. I have the open vision of the big island where the Lord showed me the decadence of the days we're now in when he showed me the ocean floor bubbling up. And it actually swallowed the island and disappeared in what seemed to be minutes. People were screaming and terrified as the waters covered them and everything that had been there and seemingly solid moments before. It was quite a bit more detailed, but I think I shared with you years ago. Now, listen to this. I also feel the Lord show me through his revelation that was supernatural. What will cause most of the land in the USA to catch fire? And it wasn't nuclear at all. It was a methane that has begun to rise across the nation and other parts of the world that will begin with a simple spark and cause the fires that will destroy millions and millions of acres along with as many people and everything in its wake. We have damaged the earth, and it will continue in smaller explosions until it's on fire where the methane has reached the surfaces, like in L.A., in the south, in New York, Upper East Coast, and all throughout the Midwest as far as the Northwest states, as far down as Texas and Colorado, Louisiana. I saw this two weeks ago, but hadn't even shared it with Stephen. That's her husband until today. I prayed during this time and feel it was from the Lord directly. Now, I just basically talked to Romy before I went on the show with you to ask for her permission to read that, which she graciously he gave me. And now this is something that most people, I talked about this the day it was happening. Most people don't understand that methane hydrate is in the oceans of the world. As that stuff starts to off gas or if it gets a tsunami or a tidal wave that basically causes the gravel to move and any sparks, Papua New Guinea a number of years ago, the ocean literally caught fire. Now here's what Romy said. And she didn't know this when she sent this to me. Uh, many parts of the world's oceans were also on fire. It was anyone's worst nightmare, but it affected the entire uh, earth and was the Lord's judgment in large part upon the sins of men and their arrogance in destroying his creation. Uh, that's why I read that verse in Revelation. God himself is going to destroy those who destroy the earth. So the bottom line is they can run and hide. They can go to their deep underground bases. They can do all this stuff. But before it all happens, and, and I, I believe it's happening now, you know, John, remember those little puzzle pieces you had to move in? They were in a little square, maybe a you know, three and square and one through 12 or whatever, and you had to get them all in order, you know, blah, 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 those little, I don't know what they call Chinese puzzles or whatever. That's what's going on right now with the faults in this this planet, with the crustal shift taking place, with the polar shift taking place. That's not, you know, heebie-jeebie stuff that talk radio talks about. That's the truth that the, the powers that be don't want you to know because they want to keep you basically GMO-fooded. They want you breathing, uh, you know, chemtrailed air, drinking fluoridated water. They want you into a bunch of zombies. And for the record, no one has written a more in-depth and telling treatise on zombies and super Bradley. Uh, Sue has done an exemplary job. It's on my website. Go up and kick, uh, hit the zombie, Steve Quayle, T-U-A-Y-L-E dot com. Because let me make it clear to you, everyone listening to my voice, zombie protocol is simply the new world's joke on everybody above surface. You're all, we're all, I'm all, we're all considered zombies and to be done away with. So basically, that I'll tell you where billions of rounds are being spent and we'll be going downrange at some point. I don't know when. You know, if I knew the time, I would tell. I do not know the time, and therefore I do not tell. Simple as that. You know, in, in all these states that think you know, we're, we passed a law getting us out of um, um, NDAA, that the troops won't round us up and hold us without detention, and my God, they're not going to do that here. Great example is that marijuana law that Steve and I were just talking about. The feds are the feds. They're going to do as they're told, and the hell with you. And it's just that simple. Um, the sinkhole in uh, Louisiana. Uh, one of the listeners just chatted me about the um, tie into BP. BP did not fix anything out there. They fractured the Gulf floor. That stuff is still leaking. And I remember when that went off, Steve, you're referring to methane gas, huge pockets of methane are underneath the Gulf. And these things, I mean, if it got to the surface, I mean, it would wipe out New Orleans if the thing cut, sparked. Oh, absolutely. And see, that's, that's the key that, that most people aren't getting. They, they don't understand what's at stake here. I don't know how to plead. I don't know how to concisely declare. I don't know how to say, consider this, consider this, consider this. Do the riots in Rome mean anything to you? Do the riots in Spain mean anything to you? Do you see what unemployment? I'm told that the California unemployment, excuse me, 
unemployment rate between 18 and 35-year-olds is upwards of 40%. I just talked to a friend of mine. He's 40, probably one of the most uh, effective communicators, a smile from ear to ear, the best personality I know of, and the guy couldn't get a job. And he said, he said, and this guy's talented. He's used to making six figures. He says, Steve, it's like L.A. is a zombie's zone. He moved back to Montana and got a job instantly. And uh, that's kind of cool. So the point being is, is that zombies are what they're calling us. So you talk about the RFID chip. Let's talk about Saudi Arabia, John. Tell the people the story, and then I'll comment. Okay. Uh, folks, in so they do this thing by incrementalism. They, they condition us, whether it's the gun laws, the smoking, the seatbelt, uh, ratting out your neighbor. They condition us. And they take their sweet time about it because they have an agenda, and it's not our agenda. In Saudi Arabia, all women now are required to be RFID chipped, besides dressing head to toe in a black blanket, so their husbands can tell if they're trying to leave the country. And also they can, they can monitor if they went to the store, what potty, who they talked to. Absolutely every woman in Saudi Arabia now has to be chipped, and it's decreed by the, the, the Omar or, or king or whatever the hell he is. Now, you did a story a couple days ago, Steve, which I shared, that there's talk about the 50 million people on food stamps are they're proposing to get them chipped. So, therefore, under the guise of cutting down welfare fraud or food stamp fraud or somebody else doesn't use your card. And so the condition in Texas and California, schools now are starting to chip the kids. And only one or two have stood up in outrage over it and, you know, being expelled for it. But it's conditioning. So these kids are growing up saying, well, it's quite normal to be chipped. You know, I have no problem getting chipped on the plane. I have no problem getting chipped at the library. I have no problem being chipped to go to the stadium. I mean, it's just conditioning. And I, that is the mark of the beast. If you can't buy or sell without your freaking chip, you know, I've got, <laughs> got a real issue with that one. Well, in Texas, you know, I, I, you know, here's the deal. Everything you think, do, and say is in the drones that passed you this day. I mean, look, pre-crime, you know, minority report, all that stuff. Since I went on talk radio, I've tried to say, watch the science fiction movies. For the record, I have, you know, multiple degrees in film and television, still photography, motion picture production. I have a minor in art history and a minor in anthropology. So, you know, the deal is I got a lot of stuff that I can recall that prompted me into my areas of investigation. But the deal that I don't think people understand is, is that Marshall McLuhan made the statement that the media itself is a message. Most people thought that television would carry a message, i.e. programming, i.e., you know, telescreen, uh, 1984. You know, the, the bottom line is, is that we're now in a time period where nothing, and seriously, nothing, your thoughts are not your own anymore. Uh, false thoughts can be implanted. And when you see the sophistication of 3D holography, meaning holographic, uh, laser, if you will. You, you, this is why discernment, I, I, I did a three-hour show, Pastor David Langford and I did a three-hour show with Doug Hagman the other night on Hagman and Hagman and talked about Christians had better be the ones on their knees literally believing God for discernment because you cannot... You cannot get the feel of not the person. I'm talking the spirit behind a person. A person can be sincere and sincerely wrong, okay? That's the wrong guy to hit your wagon to. That's why I have, in, for, for every year I've been on talk radio, I tell people, take this stuff to the Lord in prayer. If you know him as a Christian, take it to the Lord in prayer. You want to argue with me about the rapture? Take it to the Lord in prayer, the pre trip rapture. You want to argue doctrine? Take it. Right now, the thief on the cross, okay, the greatest expression of God's magnificent ability to forgive, to absolutely, absolutely be so concerned with the person next to him that he says to the thief who says, remember me when you come into your kingdom, Jesus turns to him in his agony, in his passion, in his love, and says, this day will be, you will be with me in paradise. And I get all the gnomes writing me, telling me, well, he wasn't really saved. You know, I'll tell you what, I, I'm, I'm, I am and now non-religious. I am a follower of Jesus, but I will tell you this. When I get emails like that, I absolutely want to cut my phone lines, cut my computer lines, absolutely go to Alaska and just hang out in, in the wilderness because I go, God, I don't get your people. The greatest thing in heaven 
That's why, John, you and I became friends. Look, you've never pre- 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 uh, uh, let's say pretended to be anything than, uh, other than you are, okay? Uh, you know, and, and yet God moved miraculously in your life and your family's life. And, and praise God. God's concerned with real people. The Bible says those of us who are the chiefest of sinners, those of us who are forgiven much, love much. Well, if these idiots can talk about their favorite baseball game, their favorite movie star, read all those dumb movie star m- magazines, which obviously I don't, the point is, is that why can't I talk about the greatest individual in all of the history of all galaxies, eternity, and everything. So, you know, it's like somehow the Christians feel like they got to apologize for Jesus. I said, apologize for him? Man, the Bible says that we're not to be ashamed of him. And Jesus says if we won't declare his name before the people, he won't declare our name before the Father, which is in heaven. So i got news for you. You may plant your gluteus maximus on a, uh, on a pew, uh, or, or, you know, sit in a chair, but if you're not seeking the Lord and you're not obeying the Lord, and I'm not, look, I know this. I know that my propensity to do evil is very real, but I also know this, that God's spirit and my prayer and all the intercessors' prayer is right. So basically you, John Stokes, and I and those of us get – Yet, basically, people interceding for us because there are people that love the truth. Oh, there are right. people that want the truth. But now, it's, 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 there, there's so much truth out there. It's like, what more can I say? What more can you say? Yet, you do it. That's your calling. My calling has changed dramatically. I am going into the Sunday nights. You asked me this off air. I'm going into the Sunday nights with Doug Hagman, and I'm just going to talk about the most amazing, the most wonderful, the most forgiving, the most absolute magnificent person in the universe, and that's Jesus, because I can't change a person's life. Can I share this story? It's pretty neat. A guy just sent me an email, and he said, Steve, I was with a 40 Smith & Wesson uh, caliber. I had it in my mouth. I was getting ready to blow my brains out. The Lord had told me, if I blow my brains out, I'm not going to go to heaven. By the way, he's not Catholic. And, and the Lord gave him a psalm. It's the same psalm. I read that night on Doug Hagman, and he said, knowing that, I knew God was real. And he said, I turn my heart over to Jesus, and I no longer want to splatter my brains on the ceiling. Now, that's a real testimony, okay? Because that person has value to God. But nobody ever told that person he had value to God, and so Jesus literally appeared. Someone was praying for that man. So when, when I tell people out there, I don't care what your past is, I don't care what your present circumstances is, Jesus loves you. I know that Jesus that stops a guy from pulling the trigger on his own mouth, you know, and blowing his brains out, or going out and hurting somebody else, and I tell people, you have value. And if no one will tell you, I'll tell you. The 139th Psalm says, as God is infinite, so are his thoughts of good towards us. And I go, Lord, I can't even think some days, no, seriously, I can't even think five things I like about myself. Well, I mean, God says they're infinite. So, see, we have to get our eyes off ourselves, and we have to get our eyes on Jesus, and we have to know that he loves us enough, just as he was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire, just as he was with Daniel in the lion's den, just as he delivered King Josephat from the Syrian army, just as he... He delivered uh, Goliath into David's hand and not David into Goliath's hand. And when you see how big Goliath really was, not the BS that's out there on late night talk radio. I have in my office, John, the actual anatomical representation of Goliath and David. And David is literally, he, he would look like a six-year-old to a seven-foot tall guy. Goliath, by all standards, was at least nine feet tall. Og, the king of Bashan, was 18 feet tall. So, you know, if people want to uh, really get a handle on history, I've spent 40 years of my life researching and writing books. And so i got to tell you, too, ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting another email. My phone number is 406-586-4842, 406-586-4842. If you want to know the world the way it really is, not the Bravo Sierra, I can assure you your lives will be much fuller and you'll be less frightened when you understand the game plan and what they're going to do. You know, you said something a while back, and I just didn't dare interrupt you. And I saw this posting yesterday. It was like um, 
Now, it's kind of like Mark Twain saying, never argue with an idiot because people listening may not be able to tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> and it is frustrating. It is frustrating. Yeah. It's like, all right, fine. If you don't want to believe it, that's your thing. And I, I, sign, I tell every day, don't believe a word I say. Go look it up. You know, I get disinformation once in a while, but but for the most part, I don't. This is the real stuff that's going on. You know, I, I, I've got an article for today. This drone thing, it's, it's gotten totally out of control. China's in the drone market now. Of course, they got an exact replica of our Reaper. They call it uh, Paradactus or something. It's an exact copy. They're stealing all our plans. South Africa's in full production of drones. There's, there's going to be 30,000 drones in this country. There's over 105 bases that uh, I learned through your website where they're going to start positioning these drones. And there's a post on my site today. I don't know, investmentwatch.com, I think it is, that... The Pentagon issues a, a basically a, a statement that says, "Don't worry, there will always be a human behind the decision to kill people." Doesn't that make you feel warm and fuzzy? <laughs> I've got a lot of political enemies. You know, no, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I know. I mean, I thought that. Don't worry, we're going to kill you. So if you see the the irony in that is they're not denying they're going to kill you, but it won't be the drone that kills you. It'll be them that kills you. How yeah. incredibly understanding and wonderful. Yeah, some, some snot-nosed kid sitting in a video screen in Las Vegas decides to take me out. Well, may, may, may he choke on his own snot. You know, I, he, I, don't, yeah, yeah. I don't think I people said, realize how, how this is accelerating so fast with the facial recognition from freaking space. And, you know, like you said, they can evaporate us with our own frequencies and people actually volunteering to put one of these frequency generators in under your skin is absolutely insane. Well, sure. It's just like the old, I mean, how many movies and during the spy phase of the early 70s, I mean, does somebody implant something and if they don't do what they want, Escape from New York's a perfect example. You know, if you don't do what they want, they just send a radio signal and pops a little cyanide tablet. See, does it, does it surprise any of you out there that, let's say anybody's my age, I'm 61, okay? What are our kids looking forward to? What are our grandchildren going to inherit? Trust me, at this point, the only time the meek will inherit the earth is when Jesus rules and reigns from Jerusalem, but they're messing with your mind, okay? Yeah. And so, so what they're doing is they're channeling their word, not mine. They're channeling the cattle into the chutes for the slaughter. Absolutely. That's their words. That's their words. When I talk to people who are so high up that they never have to use this statement, well, that's above my pay grade, my answer to those people is that I'm talking to the wrong guy. <laughs> yeah. I, I do. I'm sorry. You know, I mean, and not, most of them, you know, use that as a, uh, how should we say this, a poetry dropping excuse to not say something that, oh, it might be top secret. Look, the, the administration promised total openness. Every single whistleblower is either being imprisoned or assassinated. Yep. <laughs> so, 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 you know, what's the first thing that died? Well, when they, when, they, when they crucified our Lord Jesus, those of us who call him Lord, they basically crucified the truth. Truth is not a process. Truth is not a consensus. Truth is the foundation of the universe. Lies entered into the Garden of Eden. Okay? And the question, no matter what God says, there's always some entity, demon, fallen angel, skeptic, college professor, or basically, you know, alternate lifestyle person saying, that's not relevant. That's historic hate. Well, I got news for you. You can go to Sodom and Gomorrah and the place it was, you can see the sulfur bubbles. We've got sulfur bubbles across the country now, but we just even get a little better. We get acid rain. Remember the whole thing uh, 10, 15 years ago, acid rain, acid rain, acid rain? Yeah. There's enough volcanoes going off now, you know, emitting so much sulfur. So, again, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to decide what you're going to do. If 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 you had if I told you, let's say some I'm just giving you this example because let's say this is a transitional number fifty thousand dollars in IRA KO or TO four hundred one k and you can borrow out you know uh, and pay all your penalties and you get away with thirty five thousand that doubles it's in your hand. The people that I know that have lost vast amounts of money, you know what the number one thing keeping them from making the decision to buy metals was? The number one thing was they wanted to be able to 
blame someone else if they lost money. And number two, they were afraid to control their own financial destiny. I've well, talked to doctors and dentists, John, who have lost millions of dollars. Well, my case is a good example. Um, in anybody's case like that, the, they can push a button and your account's gone. You're locked out of it. You can't get it. They confiscate it, and you'll never see it again. I mean, it's, it's a fact, folks. I've had it done a couple of times. You know, and they don't give you a warning either. And the thing is, too, about you talking about confiscating, Stephen, they already have. If, if 10 people went to their local bank and said, I want my 401k cash out, they don't have it. It's already in the system. You know, the bankers are playing with it since the day they put it in there. Now, I want, oh God, I want, there's so much i got to talk to you about. December uh, 21st, we're going to get to that one. But this... Physical cliff, physical cliff. And so they've conditioned everybody to either have entitlement cutbacks, severe tax increases, and, of course, the Obamacare going in. That's going to cost everybody a whole lot of money. And, by the way, Obamacare has a provision in it. You will get a chip under Obamacare for all of your medical records. It'll be nice. But I'm looking back at history, and when things are at this kind of crisis in our country, the December – lame duck session, bad things happen. And I'm referring to the creation of the IRS, which many people will agree was not done ethically or legally, and also the creation of the Federal Reserve. And I see some nasty things coming out of this because they all got to pass something, and they're going to stick all their freaking riders and amendments and pork and, and Justice Department bills and military bills in this, and it'll probably be 3,000 pages. Do you sense that too, Steve? Absolutely. I think what, what is really uh, important, I tell them, too, people call them lame duck sessions. Years ago, I said, there's nothing lame about them. They're dead duck sessions, and we're all the dumb quackers. Yeah. Now, I'm not trying to be smart. I'm serious. It is a dead duck session. How many people, when you hear that, uh, that biological uh, automaton that passes off as uh, Pelosi talking about, well, I've never read the thing. They vote on things they don't read. You see, I believe that Congress and the Senate, to the majority, are bought off already. They're either bought off or blackmailed, you know? And to quote a former head of the Federal Reserve who said, hell, son, we own them all, to a friend of mine. The bottom line is it's all bad, okay? There's 65, yeah. there's 65 lobbyists per congressperson. Yep. <laughs> and they don't listen to us. Yeah. And if that don't do you, they've got a bunch of girls that have been trained in the niceties of uh, seduction that will be sure to show up for desk work. Yeah, Monica. Now, the Mayan calendar says December 21st. There's a great debate about that. But the Federal Reserve also expires December 31st, or 21st uh, this year. But, of course, they'll renew that. Um, but... Regardless of whether you believe Nibiru or the end of the earth or whatever, and common sense tell you we'll get through this, but there's going to be such great anxiety coming up to this, Steve, just because the, the people have been conditioned or they're expecting something. I mean, I just see, just like uh, Y2K, people were holding their breath. And, oh, I knew it wasn't going to happen, but some people bought generators and beans and rice. I see a, a subculture here of, of the December 21sters. But just it's just going to be talked about ad nauseum between now and then, isn't it? Well, first of all, I, I'm, I'm on record years ago saying December 21st, 2012 is not the end of the world, okay? It is not the end of the age yet. We've got too many things that have to happen. When Jesus said, nation will rise against nation, most people thought that was Russia against China, China against Russia, China, Russia against the United States. That's not what that means. That means ethnos against ethnos, okay? Now, what do we have? We have the biggest civil war brewing in the United States. It's, isn't it interesting that Spielberg's movie on Lincoln comes out? We're a divided nation. What type of uh, mentality or word would say, we're going to take our revenge at the polls? Revenge? Aren't you supposed to be the uh, president that, that basically is fair to all people? You know, here's the deal, okay? It's payback. The communists and they, they, they were, you're, you're undergoing a communist revolution. People say, you can't use that word. Oh, yes, I can. You know, and I do. And, and the overthrow of this country has come from within. You know, I mean, the bottom line is, is that once the 
uh, how do I say, the war on the American gun owners starts, then everything is off the board. And again, it, it, you know, this idiocy of, well, the U.S. Uh, has, you know, 150 million guns. Oh, yeah, most hunters are not trained. Now, Vietnam vets, not only Vietnam vets, but all veterans, uh, pretty well who have ever been trained in, in war know the capabilities of infrared lasers and, and uh, guided missiles and even guided sniper rounds. They know the capabilities. So the average guy who thinks he's going to, you know, defend his lower 40 with an SKS, a case of ammo, a can of spam, you know, and a pair of binoculars just doesn't have a clue. <laughs> he, you know, he doesn't. Now, you know, it, it's like when I wrote, wrote my book, I wrote, uh, what was it called? Blueprint for Survival. I think that was a very, no, Investment Perspectives on Precious Metals. I wrote in 1980 and Blueprint for uh, Survival, 84, 85, somewhere in that. So that's been a while, okay? And one of the things I did is I talked about night vision. There's a reason you see everybody wearing night vision in all the Middle East wars. And that's because, guess what? Modern warfare does not follow the U.S. cavalry and the Apache Indians. And I'm not picking on the Native Americans. I'm just saying that everything doesn't start at uh, sunrise and stop at sunset. So it's amazing to me, you know, John, I know people that have gun vaults and hundreds of thousands of dollars of guns. And I say, say, I'm night vision. Well, no, I don't need it. I said, so you step out on your porch, you hear a noise. Some guy with an infrared laser is already on your forehead and pop goes the weasel. You don't think you need it? If you had, you know. And look, I'm not making a pitch for it. I'm just telling you. The bottom line is people don't think anything. They think this is going to be the okay corral. It is not, you know. And so you have to think, okay, Everything I've seen in Iraq, everything I've seen in Afghanistan, everything I'm seeing, watching the rebels. If you see this, you'll notice this. Rebel forces have to be resupplied and supplied from an outside force in order to be effective. Well, the bottom line is, is that if a, if a, a law is passed, you must turn your guns in in 30 days or your bank account will be seized. You'll be kicked out of your home. Look, these guys have got this down to a science. And then what happens when Christians who are told not to take the mark of the beast, and by the way, the beast is a system as well as an individual, as well as prophetic imagery. So when you're told you can't buy, sell, or trade unless you take the mark of the beast or the mark of the, you know, one world order, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters? Are you going to call Beastbusters? Are you going to call RF, uh, Chipbusters? You know, you're going to call Chip and Dale. You're going to call the Chipmunks. Who are you going to call? You know, it, it, I mean, you drive a good subject. Um, because guns, gold, and grub, you know, you got to have all those things. We just finished hunting season here in Montana, folks, and it's great hunting over by Steve and over here by Island, too. Um, and it's a six-week season, or thereabouts. We've got an abundance of elk and gamer. The wolves are eating mostly elk, though. But the hunter's success rate, and these guys have dialed-in rifles, high-power scoped, and they know the terrain. The hunter success rate is only about 5%. <laughs> you know? So you think you're going to go jump in the woods and live off the land and, and shoot all marauders that come. You, you got to know this ain't coming. I mean, <laughs> you'd have to be a professional combat veteran to stand a chance, literally. And, and you know, again, uh, like somebody said, yeah, we got an answer for all you guys in fixed positions. Those were direct threat made to me. Hellfire missiles. And I said, and may the Lord return the hellfire missiles on you. That's what I say. Look, I can't, I, you know, I, I, I know this, and it's, it goes without saying. I just pray that somebody that's good with a, you know, Ronnie Barrett special takes down a multi-million dollar predator, and they have to think again. I do. Okay? Look, why is it? Let me ask the basic simple question, John, and you can answer. When did all the American people become the enemy of the U.S. military? When did that change take place? <laughs> I don't know, but you and I are pretty far up the damn list. I know that. The, well, yeah, no. I the, mean, if I ask everyone that, you'd have to say, you got a quote. There's a quote of Henry Kissinger. I mean, everything changed after 9-11. And then how did it move from fundamental Islamic terrorism to Christians, homeschoolers, constitutionalist veterans. See, again, I, I gotta be blunt, okay? What made me lose hope, uh, you know, I regained it in Jesus, but I have no hope in man. None. Zero. Nada. You know? One minute I've got the oath keepers on 
you know, and Stuart Rhodes and pushing them. And the next minute I'm told that because some lying devil with a prison record says I'm part of the establishment, some of those guys won't have anything to do with me, okay? You see, that's how fickle this is. But the point that I'm trying to make to everybody is that you have to know what's going on. You have to think this thing through, and you have to prepare. All we have to do is, is build the art to the best of our ability, and then God will absolutely do what only he can do. I tell people, too, the number one request I get for prayer in my email is that pray that God would bring somebody who's like-minded across my path. I understand the loneliness. I understand the rejection probably more than most people would ever realize. I don't feel sorry for myself. I'm grateful to Jesus, okay? Doesn't mean I like myself at all times, but I'm grateful to Jesus that God can catch his fish, clean his fish, and he who's begun a good work in me will finish it. I'm the coming of the Son of Man. So the point is, is that we are at a time period where people have got to think and act. Do what you can do, and then don't. If everybody in America turned off, who, who supposedly knows what's going on, turned off network news, and then had the, the, the uh, whatever the word would be, the uh, dedication and the uh, audacity, we'll use that word, to basically write every sponsor and say we're tough, we are uh, just uh, done with this. I don't care if it's, you know, whatever dishwashing detergent, uh, uh, you know, toothpaste, blah, blah, blah. If that, if that's the only thing that's going to get their attention. You know, I, I, I want to take this opportunity because we only got about seven minutes left here. Oh, okay. I'm uh, sorry. I didn't know where no, we're no. at. Um, this is the Christmas season, folks. There's 48 million people on food stamps. They bought their turkey dinner with food stamps. But there's a whole lot of people that are underneath the cracks, too. And, and every town has one of these, and out of necessity, I'm afraid. But they're the, I, maybe you can help me with the term, Steve. If they're halfway houses or safe houses for, for young women that have battered, their husbands have been beating them, uh, breaking their nose, their bones, beating their children, raping their children, restraining orders don't do any good. And, and every town has one of these, I'm pretty sure. Um, if, if you've got an extra $20 when you're at the store, buy a turkey and take it by and drop it off. It'll go directly to them. It won't get wasted. You'll help some kids. I mean, because they're at absolutely the worst part of their life when they're there. Um, that's all I had to say, Steve. Well, I think, I think it's absolutely right. The place I failed, and look, I'm not saying this outside of I have failed. I have had some successes, but the biggest place I failed and I have repented before the Lord, is to be able to, to translate to people that, that what we do to help others is where the meaning lies, okay? And, and I, I purposed in my heart 40 years ago, I said, Lord, I want to help the people that can no way pay me back but can only praise you. Now, look, I'm not a fool. I know that the Scripture says the same measure I give, will be given back under me. That's why I try and be generous. You know, look, if I see some guy, there's a, there's a, on drugs, there's a policeman. God bless the guy. I will track that man down in a, in a legal way just to thank him personally or find out what division. He bought a homeless guy some shoes. That one picture touched me more than any other picture outside the woman who was begging or, uh, you know, on a street. And by the way, I got a call from, uh, not a call, I got an email from London. I said, if you will find that woman with a little child who's asleep on her lap, so beleaguered, you know, I will personally send whoever finds that woman, and you can prove to me it's her, I want to help her, I want to send her some money. All I got was excuses. Well, they're all over the place. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that the place I have failed is in getting people to understand that, look, I know a lot of rich people, okay? But the hardest thing I have is to get them to care for others. I said, don't you realize if everybody's fed, you don't have to worry about those as enemies? I think that's what Jesus was really saying. Once you feed your enemy, they have a funny way of becoming your friends. You know, I, I, I'm telling you point blank, John, that I know, I know, and it breaks my heart, if I could write checks, Every day for 10000 it wouldn't be enough, but I would do it, okay? If I could, I would, and when I can do, I do what I can do. I can't do it beyond what I'm able to do. And, you know, yet, I, you know I just try and get people to help the vets. 
I try and get people, and then even some of those guys turn on you, you know? You know, I, ma- they just it just this, makes me crazy. They just had this goofy lottery in America, and, you know, <laughs> you know and over, God, a billion tickets were sold for a half a billion in prize money, um, and two people won it. I don't know who they are, but their life has changed today. But I wonder how much they're going to give back to the community. I mean, because you can't possibly spend that kind of money. I mean, you can make your life immediately better and help your kids and family. But literally, I mean, I know what I would do. Uh, you know, start helping people. You know, b- b- pay off the school bonds you know, or or donate to the food pantry. for you know. Yeah, forget school bonds. I mean, seriously, but food pantry. You see, Jesus died for people. He didn't die for stuff, okay? He didn't die for the concept. The Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the evil one. And the evil one is out trying to destroy us. That's what the word redeemer means. He bought back something that had been sold out, in this case, our inheritance, our future. So all I'm saying is this. You want to buy, you want to literally buy the gold that Jesus talks about and the silver that's refined in the fire? Start caring about others and start really taking up their cause and do it prayerfully carefully and as much as possibly uh, as much as possible silently you know in other words uh, give but you know give because listen I, I don't know that that person i fed six years ago might not be the guy that saves my life in the future i didn't do it for that purpose but god sees that stuff and he is an amazing accountant he knows he knows he knows and the reason why most people who aren't in churches that's why i ask them to support you know talk show like yours and like Doug Hagman's, because you guys are out there, and if people understood where you were on the pecking order, in other words, uh, who is the most likely to that they want to kill, and likewise for you, John, it's the prayer and intercession of Romy and all the other intercessors out there that keep you alive, too. You see, all we have to do is obey the Lord, and that's my bottom line today in closing. Please, ladies and gentlemen, care about others in Indeed. I told Jesus, I said, Lord, I am not going to say thank you. I'm going to show thank you. I will say thank you, too, in, in praise and thanksgiving. But I'm going to show thank you because actions speak louder than words. And you can't say to somebody, God bless your brother, and he's starving, and you just have had three square meals. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, and I, I discussed this yesterday. We've got a young man or a middle-aged man that I let cut firewood on my property. I don't let anybody cut firewood that needs it. Um, and he's not well off. I mean, it, I even hire him sometimes just for 10 bucks an hour for something to do around the house. But he's in tough straits. And so Pam and I decided that we don't need anything for Christmas. And it, it isn't about giving and watching other people's family and all that kind of stuff. I said, why don't we ad- adopt a family this year? You know, go out and buy him a $20 turkey and, you know, a case of canned meats. And uh, we've got some other things we can donate. And it'll just help their family just a little bit, you know. And, and it's I don't know. I thought it was a damn good idea. It is a good idea. And it's also a great idea because the thing is is that nothing enriches a man more than a smile on a face that was only torn, tearful, downtrodden, defeated, okay? I once said the five things that show me that God is real. A tear, a smile, okay, a hug, a laugh, and the word love, okay? You put those all together, and I, I can tell you this. For that instant that someone has helped, and they, they bow their head in sincere thanksgiving, they may not even know God at that point. But I've heard people that don't even know God will say, oh, thank God, you must be an angel. I said, trust me, I'm no angel, but you sure must thank him because he's the one that is making sure. So I, I got news for you. I would say this, you know, we're almost... We're almost out of time, but it's the blessing of others that will come back to you a thousandfold. That's not a corny televangelist lie. That, those guys are just called shake and bake. Once they're shaking down for all their money, then they're ready to bake your bottom and cook your goose, okay? So the point is, is that forget the shake and bake, but make a difference and pray about it. And I've never seen God fail to answer me this prayer any given day, any time of year, any week. Lord, show me someone to help this day in a demonstrable manner. Bring them across my bathroom, or in my case, email or phone, and I'll do it. 
I don't answer every need because, I mean, I got a guy who asked me to give him 70000 to bail him out of a mortgage. Good luck, pal. I got a mortgage three times that, you know. So the point is, is that I can't do that. But we can help each one. And like you said, a turkey, a case of canned meat, you know, a uh, new jacket, a uh, new coat, anything, 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 just to say, this is all I got right now, but you got it. And you are more important than my need for a pretty package under a Christmas tree of somebody buying me a dumb sweater or something I absolutely don't.